Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Neuroradiology. This is case four of our brain tumor board review. For this case, we are featuring a 53-year-old with headache and gait instability. Here we have a couple of images through the level of the pons. Kind of take a look here. This is, it can be hard to tell what type of images you're looking at when you're looking through the posterior fossa, but this is a diffusion image, a flare, and a T2 weighted image. Take a look, kind of figure out what you think the abnormality is there. Here now we have through the same level, we have a pre-contrast T1 and a post-contrast T1 weighted image. And finally, I have some coronal images through this area. I have a coronal T2 on the left here and a coronal post-contrast on the right. Uh, so from these images, you should really be able to come up with a pretty narrow differential. Really, uh, you can probably narrow it down to one diagnosis in this case. So your question is, what is the most likely diagnosis? And your second question is, what is the most likely cause of headache in this patient? Uh, are they dealing with vestibular nerve irritation, facial nerve irritation, vertigo, or hydrocephalus? This is a case of a vestibular schwannoma. Schwannomas are extra axial masses that most commonly involve the eighth nerve, and uh, they're commonly occurring in the, uh, the IEC or the internal auditory canal and along the cerebellar pontine angle. These are uh, proliferations of the myelin producing Schwann, or Schwann cells along the vestibular nerve. Now these used to be called acoustic neuromas, but it's known that these most commonly arise from the vestibular nerves. Uh, so it's more appropriate to call them vestibular schwannomas. Now these on post-contrast, they can be avidly enhancing. They can have small areas of necrosis. And mainly your differential in this case is a meningioma, which can occur along the dura in those areas. Uh, the best way to differentiate them is whether there's IEC involvement and expansion, which is common with schwannomas, and schwannomas also are more heterogeneous. Now, you first want to decide, is it solid or is it cystic? Now, by solid, I mean, does it have significant enhancing components? Is enhancement a significant feature of that? Uh, so if you're dealing with it, as in this case, there is pretty solid enhancement there. If it's expanding the IEC and it, or has internal cystic areas, that would lead you more towards a schwannoma. If it has homogeneous enhancement, perhaps some calcification, perhaps some dural tails, it might involve the IC but not expand it, then think about meningioma. Now your cystic tumors are, they'll be mostly fluid signal. Uh, think about two possibilities, arachnoid cyst and epidermoid. If it follows CSF on all sequences, then think about arachnoid cyst. If it looks not quite the same as CSF, uh, so maybe it doesn't completely suppress on flare, but the key thing about epidermoids is they have reduced effusion, so they tend to be very bright on DWI. So think about walking your way through this kind of uh, flow chart if you see a CP angle mass. Now for this case, we see that in this case, there is involvement of the IEC. You see the internal auditory canal is expanded. It has hyper-enhancing tumor in it. Uh, you see then there's this ice cream cone-like appearance as it balloons out into the cerebellopontine angle. You have mass effect on, on the brainstem there as well. Uh, now here I have a movie for you. So I'm gonna try to play this here. Uh, so here you're gonna see, this is just, uh, KISS sequence or very thin slice T2 that actually show you as it goes through here. Uh, so we can actually uh, we can actually scroll uh, back and forth through this a little bit and see the tumor there. You see the expansion of the IC. You see the mass effect on the break pontus there, the middle cerebellar peduncle. And this is pretty typical for, for a schwannoma. Uh, in this case, we also had the question, what was the most likely cause of headache? In this case, we see this patient has hydrocephalus. So that mass effect uh, from this mass compressing the brainstem there is compressing the fourth ventricular outflow tracts, causing the patient to have hydrocephalus. Uh, this is what the patient looked like post-shunting. So you see those ventricles have gotten a lot smaller. They've probably also developed a little bit of a dural fluid collection there. Perhaps they're a little bit over-shunted, but that can cause headaches. And these patients with schwannomas can get hydrocephalus. Uh, so just remember that posterior fossa masses can compress the fourth ventricle and cause hydrocephalus. Thanks to everyone for tuning in today. 
Uh, we're going to have 16 more border view tumor cases uh, coming up as part of this series. Uh, so be sure that you subscribe to the channel so you get those notifications. And uh, we'll have all those cases so you're prepared when you see a mass on your AVR exam. You know how to come up with a differential and uh, come up with the diagnosis and answer some of the most common questions. Thanks to everyone for tuning in.